On this week's episode, we are editing your photos you submitted, and Scott's going to be here in like 4.5 minutes. So we'll uh, join you here in about 60 seconds. The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the tripod alternative that is changing the world. Everybody has a Platypod. You should too. Go to platypod.com. Well, welcome to The Grid. Another week. Let's look at the set over there uh, with Scott. Hey, Scott, how's it going? Oh, oh yeah, that's right. He's not here yet. Uh, well, Scott will be showing up uh, soon, which I hope so, because he has the images we're going to be editing uh, today. So he'll be walking in in just a few minutes. But uh, until then, uh, let's uh, sort of kick off the show and just kind of you know do some announcements up front. Uh, let's talk about um, the prizes we're going to be giving away today on the show. So. We got a, always a slew of prizes here on the grid, and uh, one of the first prizes we're going to be giving away this week is the Platypod Multi Accessory Kit. So we're giving that away on the show. Platypod, um, this is a great accessories for your Platypod uh, to make it do all those little things that you didn't know it could do. And then uh, we're going to be giving away Scott's Lightroom Classic book. Uh, so we're going to give that away as well. There's the Lightroom Classic book. And then we're giving away, uh, which if you guys tuned in last week, you saw the uh, photo trivia deck from Rocky Nook. Some really hard questions on this one. So, uh, but what's great about that is you'll definitely learn something because I learned something last week. So we're going to give that away. And then we're giving away Boris Effects Optics, right? So Boris Effects Optics, awesome plugin for um, Photoshop and Lightroom where you can add those like Hollywood style effects to your images. And then uh, the other one we're giving away is On One No Noise. AI, uh, it's an AI that um, analyzes the noise in your raw photos and then is able to remove the noise and then give you back a raw photo. Uh, so that's uh, really cool. If you, you want to see how it works and everything, last week we had the On One guys on here um, showing you guys that plugin and uh, a couple others. But, um, if you want to enter the contest, all you got to do is go over to the comments down below, wherever you're watching it, put in the comments, hey, I'd like to win this, or hey, I want to win that, I want to win the Platypod, or I want to win the um, On One No Noise. Tell us what you want to win. And then also in the comments, uh, leave a comment, you know, if you're joining us, where you're from. Um, if you have any questions for us during the show, that's a great, great place to ask questions. We're curating your questions uh, to bring up. So if you have anything for the, um, when we're editing any of the questions on that. Uh, but besides that, we're just waiting on Scott. While we're waiting on Scott, let me see, do I have, actually now that I think about it, I don't know if we ever installed on my computer the software to view, which we didn't because, we oh, we airdropped it to me. So let's see. Because I did, uh, I did shoot a rocket launch this week, which was really cool. Because I was able to shoot at a decent time of day. Oh, look at NDI tools. Let's see if that's it. So a decent time of day. It launched right, right after sunset. So it was really awesome time of day. Really cool light, and we don't get that much. We have to just take what was given a lot of times. So always a, an adventure. Oh, I can't. I got to restart my computer. But anyways, if you go over to my Instagram, I bet you can see an image over there. So, which I can't bring up because Jason would have to bring it up. But if you went over there, we could talk about that. And then the other thing we got coming up, the other thing we could talk about is the Lightroom conference. So we've got a big conference coming up next week. So we won't have a grid next week because we'll be at the conference. We already have uh, tons of photographers signed up for it. So you definitely don't want to miss out next week. It's uh, the 8th and 9th, and then the day before, we have a pre-con that we're, we do where, you know, if you're new to Lightroom, you want to know how to get up to speed, um, where you should start with it. Scott will go over all the things you need to know to get up to speed on Lightroom. He also did uh, a classic and a CC, uh, or I should say cloud uh, version uh, of that. So we're going to have a crash course on that as well. And then we'll be able to break down everything, all the new features, all the new tools, all the new bells and whistles. Definitely, if you're looking to master the new masking feature in, in, in Lightroom, which is amazing, 
uh, I know that there's, there's going to be a lot of that uh, during the week, uh, during the three days. So definitely join us for that. And let's see, uh, we got we got people joining all over the all, us all over the place. Uh, Scott's walking in the building right now. I heard. Uh, and yeah, actually, there you go right there. If you go down uh, below in the bottom there, go one over. There you go. That's what happens when you can actually shoot at a decent time. If you were logged on to Instagram, you get that beautiful sky and a rocket launching. So not too many times we get that. But hey, Scott's in the house. But speaking of in the house, we've got people joining us all over the place. So we got Bill Mitchell joining us from Sacramento. Looking forward to another great episode. Carmen all the way from Switzerland joining us. Snowy Switzerland, by the way. Uh, Jack all the way from Princeton, New Jersey. We got Patricia from a sunny Florida. Yeah, it's been sunny and very clear. Uh, Belinda uh, is joining us from Tulsa. We got people joining us all over, all over the place. So, so yeah, so we went over the prizes, went over the Lightroom conference, went over the people, um, you know, joining us. And now, hopefully, we'll be editing some photos. We'll see here in a second. Let's do it. Let's edit photos. Mm hmm. All right. Well, hi, everybody. And uh, hello, I, and uh, I think uh, I would have to say that Eric was incorrect. I was here on time. I was sitting over here and I kept motioning to him, Eric, I'm right here. And yeah. he wouldn't acknowledge me. It does I think, happen. I think that's what happened. Anyway, uh, thank you for your patience. Thank you for, for covering like a boss over there. No I was able to listen to you in my car. No problem. <laughs> so it's, it's, uh, Anytime, it's nice, nice, nice. All right. Hey, by the way, I'm in the static club. I'm in club static. Oh, nice. Did club you notice static. club no. static? Do you know what club static is? No. Eric, you should know. If anybody should know this, you should know about club static. I don't know if club static. So if you have an electric car and you run your electric car to zero miles, to it's absolutely zero, and you take a picture of it, then you can get in Club Static and they send you the shirt, which is what this is, Club Static. You know, the first That's time why I, it's got a battery. You know the first time I ran my car down to zero miles? Yeah. 2013. And you drove around your neighborhood to make sure you got drove, to zero? I drove around my neighborhood, drove around my neighborhood until I got to zero, it shut down the AC and everything, and then I went, okay, I know what it does. Yep. It doesn't completely shut down at zero, but it starts really shutting down. Like, oh, it's yeah. basically, it'll just drive at that point. Yeah, mine was giving me all kinds of warnings yeah. and stuff, but you can go past zero. Yeah, you can definitely go past zero. But you zero. have to take a picture of it. Like, I took a picture of it with my phone and sent it in, and wow, I my shirt arrived today. It's very exciting. I dig up my old picture of getting down to zero. Very exciting day. All right. Uh, so we asked folks, I'm sure as Eric told you, mm -hmm. to... Uh, Send in some of their raw, unedited images. Don't have to be raw, it could be JPEG, just unedited. And then a certain number of people actually followed that. <laughs> Had a bunch yeah, of people. Yeah, that's what's hard, you know, when you tell people that instructions, like the blind critiques, when you say submit three images and they'll submit two. Or, or they'll, they'll send the 30. One or 30, yeah. Yeah, so uh, anyway, uh, we did have people that, that sent in some stuff. And so, uh, so uh, we're going to start with this one right here, which I love this picture. I think it's a great picture. It's a, Of mm -hmm. course, it's a little dark, but... Well, that's but, what we're going to start with, right? Right. So this dark. is, but this, this is the is thing. This is very normal. This, this is, is typical, right? So you get no points off for being crooked. You get no points off for underexposure. This is just, this is the original image. So, yeah. you know, this is before you would edit it. So there's no, you don't get any, any, you know, it's not like blind critiques where we go, oh, you're. And you're. they sent the raw file. Right. They sent the raw file, right. which I appreciate from a Sony. All right. And I, I just, it's a really nice picture. I really like it. It's got great leading lines and great composition and all that. So where do we, we start? To juice it up. Yeah, let's juice this thing up. All right. So where do we start? Okay. Well, the first thing that I would normally do, especially with a landscape shot, is to go up and choose a profile that would be a, like Adobe Landscape. Adobe Landscape is just a little more vivid, a little more punchy. It does a couple of different things, but it is, it didn't do a lot for this photo, but it just a little bit. All right. Just a little bit. Now this is going to sound crazy, but here's what I would say next. Just hit the auto button. Just hit it, hit the auto button and see what it does. Mm -hmm. Right. Because the yeah. auto button used to be trash, but now it's actually it's pretty, pretty decent. It's and pretty it's good. like, that's a, it basically gives you like, Here's your basic exposure. A, a, a good starting point. Yeah, good. It's, like, it's, exactly. it's kind of like if you would have shot in JPEG and it would have processed the image and kind of yeah. done it all for you. Yeah, so this, it gives you a good starting place. Now, I would go down here to the optics and turn on 
the use profile corrections to fix any little lens problems. You can see there was some uh, dark vignetting in just the, each corner. Yep. So it I a, would it's a Sigma and it, turn uh, that on, and it looks like it was a Sigma 2470. It said, hey, this is the Sigma lens, and I'm going to correct it for that. Yes. All right, and then I would go to ge geometry. Geometry. Now, by the way, if you were using Lightroom, the cloud version, um, the optics panel, yeah, it's called the optics panel uh, and the geometry panel. But if you're using Lightroom Classic, it's the same stuff, right? It's the it's same sliders. All different things. But they call it lens correction instead of optics, and they call it transform instead of geometry because geometry sounds like math. Okay. Uh, I'm going to rotate it just a hair. Which you just, would think that's just renaming those things that you could just do that across all the products. Like, yeah. like a change in the line of code. Like it yeah, would it's seem. like typing in a new word, but just they said Typing nah. in a new word, but they said, nah, we're not going to do that. All right. And you can see when I rotated it, it left these little gaps in the corner. I'm just going to choose this little checkbox, constrain crop. That's so it just crops that box. stuff away. All right. So that's, that's a kind of a pretty good start. Now, what I would most likely do, and now I don't know if you guys see this, but I see a bigger lens problem that can be fixed inside of here. And I'm going to go fix it in Photoshop. But there is a big lens issue here. It's kind of funky. And so we're going to fix that in a minute. Uh, otherwise, actually maybe raise the contrast a little bit. Maybe add a nice little bit of, uh, go to the effects panel and, and add a little bit of edge darkening all the way around, not just in the corners. It looks like a lens problem. And this isn't really looking bad. This is actually, you know, for the little bit we've done, it's looking pretty good because it's a good photo to start with. I would say this. If you look at the the ground, it's blue, right? Mm -hmm. If you look at the ground, it's a bit bluish. So I'm going to take the uh, eyedropper tool, click on it. I imagine it's supposed to be a gray road. So let's see if we can find. I'm going to click. There we go. Yeah, that looks better. That looks a little warmer. And the, and the gray, the road doesn't look quite so blue. It also popped in some of those fall colors. When yep. You did that. Well, we're yeah, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna pop in a bunch more. Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna oh we're gonna oh we're gonna, oh, we're gonna yeah. crank oh, it up to eleven. Oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna make it super fall. Uh, now, you could go one of two directions with this next thing, and and I would try both and see which one I like best. I can drag the dehaze slider to the left to kind of add more of a foggy effect. Mm -hmm. Like if you want it to look soft and foggy, that's a good way to do it. Yeah. Or you can go the opposite direction and cut cut through some of the haze. See, I like the haze in that photo. You 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 like more haze or less uh, haze? I like a little bit more haze. Personally, not I mean not that much, but yeah, I like the haze. A little more haze? I yeah. don't know, Eric. I think I'm, I think I'm going to go the other way. Yeah, it's up to, it's that's what's but, cool. But it's 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 you're right. You can make a case for this. It actually looks good too. Well, you could do it either way. Yeah. All right. That's what's but so I cool tried about both. It. I think I'm going to go with a little. Now I do want to tell you something about using the dehay slider. The dehay slider has an Achilles heel. Mm -hmm. When you yes. drag it to the right too far, it literally makes everything blue. It brings in blue. So what you have to do is, if you use a lot of dehays, I only use. 22 you don't see it very much but normally if i use a lot of dehaze then i have to go and add a little more yellow in to offset the blue yeah, uh, yeah like my road's starting to look a little blue again <laughs> we don't want that all right so that's probably all i would do in what in lightroom or in camera raw yeah now the, the last couple of moves i'm going to do in photoshop so let's hit open and we'll open it now i do want to go back to that original and here it was right here and I am going to just reset it to a default so we can always see where we started, all right? So here, that's the original, and then we're working on this one over here. So I, you may not see the distortion in this one, but here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna duplicate the layer. So I just pressed Command-J on Mac. If you're on Windows, it's Control-J. I'm gonna go to Free Transform, and I'm going to, yeah. it looks like it needs to skew a little this way. Well, that might've done it. Actually, maybe pull this corner down a little bit. Oop, maybe this one too. It just, it's a little funky. I can't quite put my finger on what it is, but let's see what was. Yeah, see? Yeah. Do you it's see like that? I want to make it bigger so you can see. It was just a little, a little lens funkiness. So I'm just going to fix that. All right, now I'm going to just flatten that image. Now, Here's what I would do next. I'm going to duplicate the layer again. I'm going to go image mode and I'm going to choose LAB color because this is a trick that we use to make fall colors look super fall. So we go to lab color 
It's going to say, do you want to flatten it? No, don't flatten. Hit don't flatten. Go into the image menu under apply image, and we're going to make two changes here. Change number one, we're going to switch multiply to overlay, which that doesn't look bad. But if you switch the channel to the B channel, so you're just going to make two changes. Blending to overlay, then the channel to B, you get super fall. Super fall. Super fall. Now, you can adjust the opacity of the fall amount right here. There's no fall. There's mega fall. But I, because we put it on its own layer, I prefer to do it that way. I'm going to click OK, and then my, my amount is controlled by the opacity slider. Because this way, if you decide, well, I, do, I don't like it in the road as much as I mean, you just add it a layer It is such mask. a cool effect. Yeah, right? and I, I think I learned that years ago. That was a Dan Margulis effect right there. That yeah, I learned. I learned it from Dan Margulis. Yeah. Yes, hats off to Dan, who, who taught it yeah. to me as well. All right, so um, actually, I still see a little distortion. <laughs> I got to yeah, fix it. Yeah, well, the other thing you could, I mean, you could if you wanted to get crazy with this one, is I would love to have it try to be as symmetric as possible, to have that road like right in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Really, and I think you could okay, do it. let's try. Let's just try. Here's what, what Eric is saying. So let's let's first off let's 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 use the trick to find out where the exact middle of the photo mm -hmm. is, which is select all and go to free transform. And when you go to free transform, look, it shows you. At, look at the top. It puts a point right in the top, and it puts a point right in the middle. So that's the center of the photo, and that's why it doesn't look symmetrical, yeah, it's right? Yeah, a little bit off. All right, so let's hit escape. I don't really need to do free transform. I just wanted to mark the spot. So if I took this a little this way, all right. And we'll hide the, the background layer. Could I go, Eric, could I go to content we'll aware scale? We'll see. Hold the shift key. And I'm going to have to drag over a little bit more than the edge. So that when I move it over to the edge, it, you don't yeah, see so much sticking out. Doing it. A little more. And move it right there. All right, there is a gap. All right, now, so, now let's so clear the guides. Fill that. Let's clear the guides. We could use Content Aware Fill. So get the Tragic Wand tool and click in that gap. Now, don't just go to Fill and hit Content Aware. What you have to do is go Edit and then go, uh, excuse me, Select, Modify, and Expand it by four pixels. That's going to, that, what that does is, so you have a selection in place. And you have to see me on screen to see this. You have a selection in place. Right now, Photoshop is looking at an empty spot. Uh -huh. When you expand it by four pixels, it literally expands into the image a little bit, and it helps Photoshop to go, oh, you want those, that road yeah, and these trees you over want, here. You want this to go in the empty spot, okay. Yeah. Yep, and the, uh, the magic number is four pixels. So click four pixels, and then just go edit, fill, and choose content aware, which is the default. That should probably do the trick. Boom. Nice. Now, I, let me see if... Oh, it missed a, a tiny here. And by it, I mean me. I didn't select that tiny little sliver, but that's easy enough to fix. We'll do the same. We don't have to expand. I covered it easily. Uh, let's go to Fill, Content Aware, and why isn't it filling that? Uh, that might just be how it's rendering it. Oh, no, no. It's just yeah, how it's it rendering it. It's fine. All right. So now we have it kind of that way. Now, you could literally just... Add sharpening and be done with it. You uh -huh. could end right here. But since it's called How Would I Do It? I would go and use a plugin. I would use a plugin to take this to the next level. <laughs> this next part is cheating, it is optional. You don't have to do it. But if you have On One Effects 2022 or even the 2021, probably even the 2020, I, you, there's two things I would add to this that I think could make it nice. Let's go uh, under the filter menu under on one. Oh, hold on. Let me make sure I, uh, oh, it's grayed out. That's nice. Uh, it's cause I'm, why is it grayed out, Eric? Do you know? I, I don't know yet. Cause I never switched back to RGB mode. Oh yes. Yeah, so I'm still in lab. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. All right, here we go. So switch back to RGB. Yes, now, space. that is one thing filter, that lab trick you will always have to do. Cause, cause once you, you forget go to lab, it's you, you don't forget. Get all right, so let's open up on one effects. Give me a second here. Pop it open. And there's a couple things that I would do in here. Now, 
You can use presets and stuff, which I do quite a lot. I do, I, they've got presets galore. But I'm gonna go over here to add filter. And one filter that I use a lot is really slick, is this one just, it's just called Sunshine. Mm, yeah. It's right here. And look what it, did you see that? Yeah, it's like it just creates that eep. Yep, it just gives it that little oh, bit of oomph. Well, actually, I want to I want to hide the visibility. Look at that. Yeah, it makes it rich. It is. It's it's a cool effect. And it and it works on so many different photos, so many different ones. All right, now, <laughs> if I may, Eric, may I? Yeah, go for it. All right, there there are one or two other things that you could do. You could add a filter that is just simply called glow. Where is it? Right here glow so this adds what would be called like the orton effect, orton effect which yeah. is a very very popular and famous landscape effect that gives a soft glow to the scene you've seen it many many times yeah. uh, you can go over here and choose either a normal all right and there's an amount slider so what you're getting is is not like a locked in thing there's lighter which lightens the image and adds the glow or it darkens the image and add, adds the glow I think the normal is probably okay or lighter. They both look good, but it adds a little bit of glow and you can decide do I want a lot of glow, a little bit of glow, but it's, but you can notice the Orton effect isn't just glow. It is glow plus contrast. So it, it also affects other stuff. So you could add this. Can I add one more Eric? Yeah, let's do it. I would go to add filter and go to sun flare. Oh now boy, when you now add going crazy, no, this is good. This is good. No, now, this, I mean, this is this is just showing people. This is how you build it yeah. up. Yeah. So when you hear you us it. talk about finishing moves, yep. like I go, what do I use uh, on one effects for? For finishing moves yep. at the very end of it, right? So go here to sun. I click on sun flare, and then there's all these flares. Or you can go sun star is actually really good too. So then it gives you the, and you've got all these to choose from. So you can choose which one. Ooh. 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 Nice. I know, right? Well, let's just see what else there is, because you, you, there, yeah. there are other ones. Oh, yeah. I like that one. I like that one, too. It doesn't like seem so obvious. One. All right. So anyway, there's a little transform thing here. If you want to move it to a different location, you can put it wherever you want in the image. I'm going to pop it, maybe. Where would you pop it? Because, uh, the, look, the, the light's going across this way. You could you could make a case for it anywhere. I think I would probably put it over this way, maybe halfway into the... And by the way, uh, I was talking to Dan from, from On One. We, we had him on the show and stuff. And, and these are actual photographs of Sun Flare. They're not yeah. like... A, it's not a made-up thing. They're actually... They, they used images to create these. Anyway, but... Uh, so let's go ahead and hit done. I, I mean, we could go on, but we'll just stop yeah, right there. Yeah, we keep on going. All right, so there's there's how I would finish it, and here's where we started. Yeah, and, so and gonna, I think what's what's amazing, and that's what people need to see, is a lot of times is that's very typical. Let's go to arrange. It's very typical for your raw file to look like the left, and your finished yeah. file to look like the right. Right, but here's the thing, I and the guy that did it is uh, Friedrich Bretman, who, who that's his photo. Friedrich did the most important part. He started off with a great photo. Yeah. It's composed well. Yeah, leading lines. Got leading lines. All the things were there. So then all you're doing is bringing out stuff in post. Now, I will say we pulled a couple of fast ones with the LAB trick that makes it that does the uh, that makes the uh, uh, the fall look. Mm -hmm. And we did come in with sweep in with it. Uh, uh, the sunshine little bit of soft glow, pop a sun up there. But let's just take Honestly, the sun. Scott, if you're not at that location at like the perfect day of the year. Yeah. The, I'm talking the perfect day of the year. You would not get that photo. So that's what in post, we're just kind of enhancing it. Yeah. It's, it was there. The data was there. You're just enhancing the data well, the, that was there. The sun flare that I added the at the very the end was not is, there. The sun flare is... Everything else was there. Yeah. The sun flare is like you're taking it to the next level. So there we go. So you can take out the sun flare if you want to be... All right. John has a there. question. John says, is there any way to do selective dehaze in Lightroom or Camera Raw? Absolutely. So, um, so John, what you would do is you would use the masking tools. Mm -hmm. You would choose the brush. And if you look in the brush, 
there is a slider for dehaze and you can paint yeah. dehaze. So if you want it just in parts of your image and stay away from the corners or where it gets you really use bad. any selective tool and masking. Yeah, and you then could use dehaze. Yes, you, you could know, do like the you linear do gradient. Sky and say, I only yep. want to dehaze the sky. Yep. Or I want to undehaze the sky and create it foggy. All right, now now that I've settled this, I wish I'd taken this picture that Friedrich did. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> I love this picture. Like if I saw that when I was scrolling, I'd be like, yeah, definitely, I like that one. Yeah. All right. So it is. We're, we we got to take a break because that took a, a little bit of time to do, but that's okay. Uh, when we come back, uh, we've got lots of cool stuff. Hey, the, the Lightroom conference is just about a week away. One week. One uh, week of yes. All right. Uh, Monday. It's going to be awesome. We've got people from all over the world signed up, and we want you to be there too. It's two tracks, two days. We got killer classes. And if you're like, I don't really know Lightroom, I don't know if I should go, come a day early because I am doing a short crash course on like, look, if there's 10 things you need to learn in Lightroom to be able to enjoy the next two days, this is what they are. So I put together a great pre-conference, come a day early. It's included in your registration uh, and you can come and watch it. Now, if you're already using Lightroom and you're pretty good at it or you feel comfortable in it, don't go watch a crash course because I am literally starting from like, look, you've never really used Lightroom before. Let's get up and running. And then the next two days, you dig in deep and all. But I'm excited about it. There it's So it's, it will be at 11 a.m. the day before the conference. So the conference is, that's on February 7th. The conference is uh, uh, the 8th and 9th of February. And, and you get it archived for a year. So we're going to show you the official trailer coming up here in a minute. But uh, I just wanted to remind you it's coming up. We're very excited about it. And you will learn lots of stuff like you just learned here but loads more. So we'll see you after the break. Hi, my name is Ibarian X. Perello. I'm a photographer, as well as the host and producer of the Candor Frame Photography Podcast. And you may also recognize me from another course that I taught here at Kelby One, my course on street photography. Well, this course is something different. It's teaching you how to become your own best editor. Now, regardless of how long you've been making pictures or how experienced you are with a camera, there comes a time where you have to be able to assess your own work. Not whether an image is good or bad, but what that body of work means and what you want to do with it. And that's the role of the editor and that's what I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you my own personal process and how I use Adobe Lightroom Classic to look at images from a shoot or a project and discern which of those images are the best and translate them into a gallery, a spread in a magazine, or a book or an exhibition. All those pictures that you love to create into something that has greater meaning than whether that picture looks good as an individual photograph. This course is a lot of fun, and it's a breakthrough for many that I've taught in my in-person and online workshops, and I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. Join me on my course on Kilby One, you're bound to have a lot of fun. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by B&H Photo, the professional source since 1973. Hey, we are back. Scott here with Mr. Kuna. The Kuna. Hey, everybody. The K-Man, the Kuna Man, We're the back. Can Ham. That was right. an awesome first image. I love that. Yeah, well, you know what? When you start off with a great image, you know, then you, yeah. can, you can really build on it. Speaking of great images, we have a great one here. Uh, very different. All right. <laughs> Not a landscape. Mm -mm. But, uh, you know, I love automotive photography. So, you know, this is a like, ooh, I got to do this one. Uh, yeah, first off, I... Can... I I can already tell some things you're going to do this one. This is the same situation where the photographer did a good job with the yep. shot, set me up for success. Yep. Now, this is not going to have the wild stuff you just saw in the other one because this one's exposure is so good. Yeah. Right? The exposure is basically there. 
Um, we're going to work on the car. Well, we're going to work on JPEG the sky. Too, so it might have been processed. It's probably processed. It already. is a JPEG. Yeah. And, and it looks like it may have been processed to somewhat. Yeah. But we're still going to we're going to give it a, a, a quick look. OK, so uh, first step is I might go ahead and try the uh, uh, what's uh, we can't use the profiles because it's not wrong. OK, let's hit the auto button and see where we start. OK, so auto. I would say overexposed yeah, the photo. Yeah, too far. So it went too far. So let's let's drop the shadow slider. That's okay for like you can see what it did and you can make your adjustments. Well, it, it started really opening up those shadows in the middle in the in the driver like in the car. Right. I and mean, that was just too much for the. Oh whole yeah, image. yeah. So I just kind of balanced it out a little bit. But what I would do is let's work on the sky first. The sky looks too light. Right. So let's go. And we're going to hit the masking icon up here. It's the same one that's in. Hey, guys, what I'm showing you is identical in Lightroom as what it is to camera. Raw. I'm using camera raw, but it's identical. It's the same sliders in the same order that do the same thing with the same math written by Light, the same person. Photoshop, Lightroom, Lightroom, uh, mobile, mobile, classic. It's all, all the same. same. The only difference is like you talked about. Sometimes the name will be different. Yeah, sometimes there's or two things where the name. Or if you're using the cloud version, you might not have certain things. Yeah, there's certain things. Well, I'm not going to use any of the things that the yes. cloud version isn't. But uh, like, for example, here's the big difference. Ready? The masking tools over here in a vertical line yep. in Lightroom. It's horizontal. Yep. Eh, I mean, but it's the same stuff. It's the right? same stuff. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go choose. So when you choose masking, watch this. It's going to use um, AI to select the sky. Just click on select sky. Wait for a few seconds. Boom. Boom. And select the sky. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. So the red tint shows you what's selected, but you haven't done anything yet. As soon as you move a slider, the red tint goes away. But it puts the red tint up there so you'll know, okay, it worked. Okay, it selected okay, the sky. Okay, I did the sky. Or it selected so the subject. You could either just go and lower the exposure of the sky, and, and that helps the car pop, right? Or let me undo that. You could go and say, I want a, I want a neutral density gradient or something like that. In our case, we'll just, we'll just darken it up. All right. So that would probably be step one is to make the car just pop off that sky a bit. And all I did was, and this is a typical thing that I'll do, to make skies look better, you darken the exposure, right? And the exposure controls your midtones, right? And that's, that's like my main sky trick is make it better, lower the exposure. Okay, next, I would go and hit the create new mask. So I'm telling Lightroom or Camera Raw, leave what I did. I'm okay with what I did. I want to do something different. So click create new mask and I'm going to choose the brush this time. Now I'm going to take the brush. I'm going to go to exposure and I'm going to open up this grill on the front of the charge or a challenger. It's not, it's a challenger, not a charger. But open up the grill. I'm going to go to shadows and open that up a little bit. I want you to see the detail in the grill. Yeah. If this were, uh, you know, shot on Dodge's site, you would see lots of detail in that grill. Now, do you also notice the problem that's happening? It's turning blue. <laughs> so, while just in the area I've painted, right, just in this grill, I can go and add yellow. Yeah, add some more. To, off, to, to offset the blue so it doesn't look blue in there. While I have the brush, I think I would paint down here in the air scoop here. That's not the right word. I don't know why the right word is escaping me, but all right. And I'm just, I'm holding the option key because I painted over it accidentally. So anything that you may make a mistake, if you hold the option key on Mac, which would be the alt key on a Windows PC, it gives you an eraser brush. And then I probably would go also, now I might have to do the wheels separately. Let's hit create new mask brush and let's do the wheels separately just in case, you know. And I, I do want to see some detail in the in the wheels themselves. So let's go to the back wheel, not the tires, but the wheel. And maybe open up a little more shadows. I want to see the red brake calipers. See, I can remember a fancy word like calipers, but I can't. Yeah. All right. So that kind of gets me in the ballpark in the car. However, I'm trying to think of it. I'm, I'm just talking tone wise. Let me just look and see if there's anything else tone wise. All right, the other stuff is, is, is an, another different level of stuff. I'm going to go to open it, and here we are in, uh, in Photoshop. Okay, where's my uh, layers panel? Okay, so here's what I would do. First off, you have some things that you got to get rid of. This sticker in the window has got to go. You know this. This is, I'm not, I mean, the, the person that does this, they've obviously are accomplished enough that they would have taken this out without me having to say anything. But I'm just mentioning to you guys watching, all right? Then 
This thing's got to go. I don't even know what it is, but it's got to go. I use the patch tool. So for little stuff, I use the healing brush. For big stuff, I use the patch tool. It's cousin. Here's how it works. Drag a lasso around the outside. Click in the inside. Drag it somewhere else and let go. Woo, it's gone. Come on. It's pretty sweet. Over here, there is a very, did you notice this immediately, Eric? This yeah. line, that line jumps out at you, right? You're supposed to look at the car. You're not supposed to go, what is this? Let's try doing it over here. Mm -hmm. Drag it over. Oh, I don't know what I did there, but uh, let me try it again. I did something with my, that's closer. It's not, not quite mm -mm. gone yet. All right, here's what you're gonna have to do. Get the quick select tool make the brush a little larger and select this part of the area. I'm going to remove that. And then you're just going to go old school. Get the clone stamp tool. And what you're going to do, where is my cursor? I can't yeah, find like it. It got wonky on you. Oh, there it is. All right. Can you see it? No. What's going like on it, with my it's, cursor? It's something when you zoomed. Yeah. You zoomed in. Oh, it's like there. Changes. It's just you can't see it against that color. Yeah. So I'm going to option click to steal this color. Then I can just paint this wall right over. So we're going old school for this part. That's okay. This tool's only been in Photoshop 40 years. Uh-oh. No, that was that. in the sky. Don't, don't do that. All right. There we go. You kind of got rid of that stuff. That's a, a quick job, but you got rid of it. Here's what I would do next. Gosh, my background. I made my background black. Let me go switch back to the default color. There we go. All right. So the problem with the car, you did good without, with getting rid of all the reflections and stuff, but the car looks one dimensional. It looks kind of flat. So what I would do, there's a couple things you could do. One is to go in here, let's add a new layer. And I'm going to, I'm, this is going to be a crude selection. In other words, it's naughty. No, and I want to kind of select right above that red line because you can see the car has a natural break in the body there, right? It, yeah, they usually put the pinstriping where those kind of like yep. curves are. So I'm, I'm going to do this. And this is, I, I would do this with the pen tool to make it, you know, more accurate and all, but we're, we're not going to go through all that. I'm just using the polygonal lasso tool, which draws straight lines, and then we're going to connect it down here. Now, you could just brighten that area of the car. That would be one. So you could just go to background layer, go to whatever you want, go to uh, camera raw filter and brighten just that area up and click OK. That's too much, which is why I don't like using the camera raw filter for this, because the camera raw filter doesn't show you the brightening in the context of yeah, the car. Yeah, it doesn't show you the whole thing. Yeah. So I would probably just go to curves or layers, just go to curves and click in the middle and maybe drag it up a little bit. You just want to have a, some kind of a visual change there. All right, so let me show you that that's, I've done it very crudely, but let me show you before and after. So from here to there, see how it's got that mm -hmm. highlight? Or you'll also see this very commonly done in cars. Let me undo that, let's undo that and undo that. So where we're at here, go to your, go to your blank layer and grab a gradient that goes from white, so I'm, I'm making white my foreground, mm -hmm. to transparent, it's the second one. So click on that uh, foreground color to transparent. And then you're gonna drag up, just straight up. And you see how it adds a highlight right at the line? You see this a lot, I gotta get the angle right. Oop, that's not it. That's not it. Getting close. <laughs> Trying to get that angle, oh, I'm getting, it takes, it takes a few tries. All right, that's closer. Yeah, that's good. Now, then you go and lower the opacity until it looks real. So it, should, it shouldn't be like hitting you over the head. And you might need a, a smaller gradient, like it needs to go from white to transparent quicker. So you would go up here and click, and then you'd go and say, I need this to go, I need this to, to move quicker to transparent than I just did. It needs to, let me move these little sliders. I need it to happen fast. So you could go in and redo it, but that you need to add some highlights to, or something to give it some depth. Yeah. You're adding that contour. That yeah. Now you can contour. also go and make a hard one you'll see these as well. Now I'm just giving you ideas here. This isn't like, all right, but you could do a hard line as well. So, and you see this a lot, fill it with white 
and then lower the opacity a little so it doesn't look so obvious. But you'll see a hard line as well. It kind of looks funky there. But you'll see it on the hood sometimes, and you'll see it. You'll also see someone go like this sometimes. They'll take a whole section of the car. This is really going to be crude, but you'll get the idea. And here, let me just go. This is really going to be a hack job. Oh, my gosh. Oh, it got really bad there. Yeah, but you'll see that's really poorly done. But you'll see it come in like that with a little bit of a highlight. But you got to, you need, it needs, it just looks, the car itself looks flat. And then from that point, the other thing I just, I would do to finish it off is I would get rid of all the other tire tracks. Yeah. You don't want to see any of those tire tracks. You could probably get rid of it, most of it with like the spot healing brush or the patch tool I showed you earlier, but those got to go. All that stuff is taken away. Now, I know that, that this person sent me an unretouched image and it'd be like of course i'd get rid of those scott but for everybody else that is watching from home that may <laughs> that turned out nicely oh. let's just yeah. paint over that you got to get rid of all these tire tracks and stuff and then you know you want to sharpen the daylights out of it oh could, we, one could thing we, we do could we do one thing of the, like uh try to flatten out that there's like a hump or do you does that bother you like that hump that's in the in the road what oh. it's sitting on yeah I, I you know what i i didn't notice that but now that you say it i can't unsee it yeah i guess what you could do eric is let's do this let's select just below the hump mm -hmm. and then drag it up to where it's flat mm -hmm. so what i did was you can see i made a selection and just dragged it up yeah but it helps yeah I, I guess it it's not perfect. It's not perfect. Uh, and, then, but... and then I would go and maybe do so. Well, we want to sharpen, and we also want to um, – this is what I didn't do. There's I also one other thing that's happening. And just... All right, let me, let me do this first, and then we'll do it. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't add texture. I didn't add clarity, and clarity makes cars shiny. Oh, yeah, clarity is great. So I'm going to add cars. a lot of clarity. Ooh, the car's coming alive. See how – ooh, the clarity. And you could put the clarity just in the car, too. If it was affecting the other part, you could actually add clarity just to right. the car. So well. let's, I'm going to hit cancel so I can show you how to do that. Yeah, you don't want to add a bunch of clarity and stuff, good call, to the sky and all. So what you would do is go to filter, go to camera raw, go to uh, the masking tools and hit select, select subject, and it just selects Boom. the car. That's what I would have done. Right? Yep. Then go to clarity, and now when you put the clarity on, it's just hitting the car. And that add works some texture. so well. Add some clarity, and it's and really now making the car it pop. Has jumped off that background. And you can go down here to sharpness and add some sharpening just to the car. You don't want to sharpen the clouds and all that stuff. Uh, I mean, the clarity might be a little much for me. It's about what 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 might be the clarity? I think you got. I, I mean, that's just me though. Yeah. No. No. Well, it looks right different. There, it's good. You know what it is? Yeah. I'm looking on our monitor in the in the studio. Yeah, that's the thing. I'm and looking I'm looking at on this my monitor. screen. My screen looks good. The monitor looks overdone. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's hard for me to tell. So, all right, now let's go back and find the original image. Boy, which was, yeah. Let me go and choose uh, reset to default. So there was the original, and there's the finished one. You can see it didn't. It is not like flipping night and day, but you can see the detail but now. But it did everything to make you focused on the car and yep. not everything else. Yep. All right, we've got some yep. more images coming up on the next break, so don't go away. We'll be right back. We're going to look at more images. Let's go. See you in a minute. Multitask with Platypod, the ultra commercial twin pack. Distance learning during a pandemic is a challenging situation. With the Platypod twin pack, you can teach your students just like before by letting them see the big picture. Nothing puts the board in boardroom like the same old view. The Platypod Twin Pack easily fits in small spaces, so you can unlock a variety of unique angles that share the whole story. When you can't waste time on multiple setups, let the Platypod Twin Pack be your sous chef. It captures multiple angles simultaneously, so you can focus on what you do best. Sometimes just getting around your quick can be Platypod Twin Pack clears the floor of tripods and light stands so you can use the entire room! Now more than ever, we're learning to adapt. 
We moved the office into the bedroom, and we moved the gym. Whoa! The platypod twin pack is just as adaptable. You can mount or strap it to just about anything. Turn any location into a professional setup. Yeah! Ooh! Platypod twin pack. No matter who you are, or what you do, or where you do it, double your creative impact with the platypod twin pack. Go to platypod.com to get your twin pack today. An often overlooked but incredibly lucrative avenue for photographers is documenting bar and bat mitzvah ceremonies and their crazy parties. They produce more referrals than weddings and potentially steadier income, but where to begin? Because there are rules you need to know about Jewish customs and lighting inside some of the older temples can be very, very tricky. Luckily, I can help you with all that. I have been photographing bar and bat mitzvahs in the Los Angeles area for 15 years, maybe even longer, and I can teach you everything you need to know. I'm Jefferson Graham, and I hope you'll join me for my latest class right here on Kelby One. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. Hey, we're back. Uh, don't forget, we got some great giveaways today, so make sure you drop us a comment of any kind. Let us know which, just drop us a comment and say, I'd like to win blank. So there's that. Hey, can we give away a ticket to the Lightroom conference? Yeah, can we, we can always give prices? away a ticket to the Lightroom conference, yeah. Let's do it. There we go. All right, now yeah. we're giving away a ticket to the Lightroom conference. And, uh, However, if you're already registered, pick something else. <laughs> if you're pick already you're registered, in my life. pick something else. All right. Here we go. We got a great shot here. We're hitting great photos today. This is a really good one. Oh, nice. This one's this one is so good. You could just about leave it alone. You could just say, what would you do to it? I mean, that's a raw file too. Yeah, this is the raw file. So here's and it's off a of Canon Rebel. Right. Mm -hmm. So great, great With, shot. Uh, 100 to 400. Yep. Very nicely done. The only thing like when I look at it, Here's what stands out to me. So I like to, I like to kind of evaluate it first and see, ooh, what do I need to do? Um, you know, some of the other ones, they were so underexposed, it was easy to go, oh, it's underexposed, you know. But with this one, the, the detail of the back of the bird is really good, but the bird's face is a little bit in shadows. So yeah, we got, would, we're gonna have to fix that. Yeah. We can fix that. Can fix that. The other thing I would probably do is the little, the thing it's sitting on. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, like the the, the left one is cut is. off. So I'm either going to work some Photoshop magic and grow it a little to like add more I, space. I think that's and, what you're probably going to do. Because I will say the one thing I like about it is number. that it's um, it, the composition of it, right? I do. And I like how it's in. There's five of them. There's like an odd number. No, of I know. Them. I love the odd number. So, but Eric, we have another option. To go down to three of them. We can go down. That was the other option. We'll look option. at both. We'll look that at both. That was the All other right. option. Let's go down but, to three. But uh, let's just first, let's see. It's the raw photo. Let's go to Adobe Landscape and see what that does for us. Ooh, look at that. What? Oh, it, it did make a difference. Watch. Boom. All right. I like mm -hmm. that. Next, let's hit auto just to see what it does. It doesn't do much. All right. So it, we're going to need to do what I thought we were going to need to do is work on the bird. So get the masking tool. Go to select subject. Watch this. Boom. Bird. Now, it's okay. It's selected too much, but it got the bird. That's the important part. If it selects too much, if you hit select sky, if you hit select subject, it hits too much. Go over here to the word subtract. Mm -hmm. Click on subtract and then choose the brush. So anything I paint over will no longer be affected, will no longer be highlighted. So I don't want these. This one. Let me make my brush big. I don't want this one. I don't want this stock, or I don't really want the what he's sitting on, and I don't want this. That's easy. That's it. So you make a selection. Wow, my thing is just moving all over the place. All right, I made a selection. It's selected too much, so I need to take away or subtract from that selection. That's what we did. All right, I'm looking. Yeah, at but Eric that like, that is that is much easier than getting in there with a the paintbrush oh and my selecting gosh. that no, bird. I'm telling you, the masking oh, stuff they added that was so changes painful. everything. Yeah. All right. Now that I have it selected, you know, see the red tint is over the bird. Now I can go and move sliders. So I would probably go to shadows and open that up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Maybe add some contrast, a little bit of whites, a little bit of blacks, which is just adding more contrast, by the way. Um, 
And then I'm going to bring out detail. So I'm going to go texture, texture. Yeah. little bit of clarity. Whoop. And let me see what D Hayes does. Mm. I just made it too dark. Yeah. All right. So here's what I would do. Let's create a new mask. I like what I did so far. Let's create a new mask. Click on the little button up here and we're going to choose brush because I want to brighten the bird's head, not the body. Yeah, right so let's go to area. exposure up. Maybe, I don't know, a third of a stop, smaller brush. I'm using the bracket keys on my keyboard. And then we're just yeah, going right to, I just want to balance the brightness of the bird's head with the rest of the body. Yep. That's it. And I think that pretty much did it. Now, at this point, I mean, what do you got? What do you got left to do? Let's add some sharpening. Let's go to the detail panel, add some sharpening. You want it nice, sharp and crisp, but then we come down to these other things. Do we get rid of, or do we add to the little thing? So here's, let's look at both. If you wanted to add to it, what you would do is you would go under the image menu to canvas size and you would see this little grid. This shows you where you're going to add canvas size. I want my image to stay on the right and I'm going to add a little bit of canvas size, an inch to the left. So that that's what you get that big, just emptiness. Now let's try just for fun, selecting that area and I'll select a little into my photo and let's just go to content aware fill. Let's just see how it does. Could be great. Could be trash. Let's see. Snow bad. Snow bad. bad. That ain't bad. Snow bad. <laughs> that ain't bad. But, but. Just a little bit actually, of cleanup. Actually, it did pretty good. Here's yeah, what I Yeah, I mean, do. I don't even know if you'd know it, but there is a little bit of cleanup. Yeah, it's a little bit there. of smudge there, yeah, right? Yeah, smudgy. What about this? Let's try this. What if you just went and you stole from this one over here? Right? Maybe we steal this whole half here. Whoops, a little bit more. Sorry, I didn't do as... as all right, and press Command J. So you just have this, mm -hmm. and it's floating on its own layer. So I would just take it over here, kind of scale it to where it looks right. Uh, it looks like it should be brighter. So I'm just going to go to either curves or levels, your choice. For those of you who like levels, I'll do a level one. Let's just brighten it up a little bit. You want to kind of match, well, actually, midtones probably do it better. Kind of match the surrounding area as best you can. Then we're going to add a layer mask. So you're going to click the third icon at the bottom of the layers panel to add a mask, get your brush tool, make sure it's set to black. And then we're just going to erase the hard edges that you see from where I selected to where you kind of have a blend of the, the other one and this one. So you're kind of, you are adding a nicer looking version of what yeah. was there. And then I would probably recrop the photo a little bit. So now that I've got that in there, I want to go recrop and we added an inch to the other side. Well, wow. We, <laughs> we, what oh is my going goodness. On? I don't know what's going on there. I'm just hitting the shift key. I'm just hitting the shift key. <laughs> it went nuts. It went, I'm trying. Okay. I'm not even going to hold the shift key. We're just going to be careful. Maybe something like that. Yeah. Now. When you see the original, this is not going to be that, that yeah, much different. There wasn't much to that one. It's not much to it, but you know, still, is this the right photo? Yeah. Let's go back and choose reset to default. And we'll put them side by side so you can see them both. And we'll go window, arrange, two up, vertical. So you can see them up. Oh, they're not, they're not in the right order. Hold on. Go that way. There we go. I want to see a before and then the after. We get the before to, there we go. To a better size. Why isn't it, let me, arrange to a vertical. It's still not right. <laughs> the, the after but is. So you can see where you open up the, the bird, where it's not in the shadows. All right, let's just, let me try it this way. Let's put them in the wrong order to begin with and then try arrange and it, it should be Gosh, seriously. All right. That is just, it's cranking me. All right. I know that this is stupid to spend time on this, but I'm going to do it because now I can't. Yeah. It's right now. Cause right now it's after and before, and that does not work. No. And it's driving me nuts. So we'll consolidate the tabs. I'm going to switch these two birds. And now we're going to try it again. Arrange two up vertical. 
Why won't it show? I'm just going to do it manually. Look. Here we go. This is the lame way to do it, but I'm desperate. Oh, oh my goodness. You, I think you need a restart. Yeah, I think I do need a restart. Maybe on the break. Okay, so there we go. Uh, it was such a good image to start with, but I think it's certainly worthy of... of uh, oh, yeah, but just look at, like, just the simple stuff that you did. Now, the bird's popping. You can see the eye. That's the most... Uh, hey, wildlife photography, right? It's the, the eye, eye, right? So we're eye. seeing that eye. The yeah. bird's sharp. It's standing more out in the background. You see on the left, it kind of, like, bird looks soft. We're adding that contrast, the bird pops out. Yeah, the contrast and the sharpening and yep. the clarity. And, and then the giving that breathing stuff. room to that fifth, I don't know, whatever that flower burr. thing or it's a burr. burr thing. Giving that that room or that breathing room really helps. Yeah. Awesome. Very, very nice. All love right. The, love the shot, though. Great. I do as well. Okay. Uh, hey, let's take a, a short one. Uh, we have more images to do. We're going to try to get through a couple more, and we've got uh, some prizes, uh, prize winners. So don't go anywhere. We're coming right back with more fun, fun stuff. Don't go away. Let's see what's next. Guys, Adobe just announced, I am not kidding, a groundbreaking update to Lightroom and Camera Raw, and it's across all the Lightrooms, whether it's classic or cloud or mobile or whatever. Crazy stuff that they did with the masking. Am amazing, wonderful changes, everything, because they took some of the AI stuff and the machine learning stuff and the amazing, crazy Photoshop stuff, and they put it in Lightroom. And guys, I'm telling you, this is game-changing, mind-blowing, crazy stuff. You're going to be able to work faster and more efficiently and do things you never thought you would do in Lightroom. They have done an amazing job with this. I'm telling you, <laughs> this is this is absolutely awesome. And I put together a class, and it's a short class. It's not a big, long one. It's a short one. And when you're done with this class, you're going to totally get it. You're going to know it all, and you're going to be able to apply it to your work right away. It's going to change your game. You're going to love it. You're going to have a blast with it. And I cover it all in my brand new class. So come check out my brand new class on all the cool new Lightroom masking features over at kelvy1.com. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the world's most compact tripod base. Hey, oh, we're back. Uh, we are looking at your images and stuff. So uh, let's open up this one. This is a good one. We don't have much time, so I have to kind of get, you know, go through these. A uh, really nice image. It, it looks flat, but that's how raw images look, right? Raw images haven't yep. anything done into them in the camera. It's the raw. Well, this is what the can. But but good composition and a neat scene and stuff. Uh, so let's just see what we would do. Well, I'm going to start off by switching to Adobe Landscape. That's a tad better. It is better. Uh, yeah, I, but I would probably do a creative white balance, right? I would probably look at this and go, well, what if I dragged way over to yellow? Maybe a little over towards pink. More, more yellow, maybe something in there. So that's starting to look a little more interesting. Let's hit auto, see what happens. Not much. <laughs> it hardly moved at all. Well, it did a yeah. little bit. Um, but I would maybe add some more contrast. And here's the big question. 
dehaze. You know how I feel? To the left, adds haze. But there's tons of haze here. I'm yeah. thinking we go right. Yeah, and the reason, I would cut through it. Yeah. The reason is I want to see more detail. You want to see those around. layers of the mountains. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think that's where we go. Also, it looks a little crooked. Let's go to optics and turn on the profile. Yeah, you, you can see when you did the dehaze, yeah, you've got some serious vignetting. Can't the auto button won't work here, so let's uh, rotate it a little bit. Trying to get that a little straighter. Oh, I might have gone a little too far. And then we'll hit constrain crop to get rid of that extra stuff. This is I'm kind of liking where this is going though. Yeah. All right. Let me look and see if there's anything else. We could do uh, texture. I don't really want to add clarity. Um, I don't know if I want to add more vibrance. It's looking pretty colorful as it is. Plus, I think I'm going to cheat in a minute. Uh, I would do this. Let's go ahead and open it. And I would probably get, there's a telephone pole down here. I don't think those telephone poles are doing you any good. So I would get rid of that pole. That one. That one. That one. That one. That one. That one. Oh, that one might be a little stickier because there's I a tree behind the, it. Yeah, that's a tree behind it. Um, and then I would go in with a very small brush. I'm not going to make put you through all this, but get rid of all the, the lines that were connected. There's not a lot of them, but whatever lines that you see, I would get rid of those. All right. Now, you could just leave it at this and be done and add some sharpening and just done, right? And let's go get the original, see where we started. And we haven't done much to it, but let's just go and hit um, set to default. All right. So that's the before and then the after is over here. Now, now it's time for finishing moves. Here's what I would do. Filter on one. Oh, this is where effects is gonna come in. On one effects, I'm gonna hit sunshine. I'm walking on it. Yep. Anybody? No? Yeah, we're no? gonna walk on sunshine. All right, let's let's image. clear off what we had. Yeah. Clear off all that stuff. All right, go to add filter and I'm gonna hit sunshine. Look at that. Just that one, right? Just that one, right? Look, it just makes it saturated. It adds some contrast. And of course, you can add the amount. You have natural, strong, or glow. Ooh, the glow's kind of nice. But they also have more choices, too. You can do radiance, strong. See, it's hard. I like natural, but it could be because it's this screen. It yeah, I'm, I'm liking natural, but I'm bringing it up a little more. Uh, you could add a glow if you want. I think I'm going to go for the sun flare, but I'm going to go for a different sun flare. Let's go to sun flare, but I'm going to go for more of a flare like this instead of a, let me hit the little transform thing here so I can move it. I want to kind of the edge of the screen, but there's all kinds of sun flares. Let's go look at them. Uh, there's a list right here. All kinds of nice, and it, had, they have, it has lens flare effects in it. Yeah, again, because like you said, they're shooting the actual flare, right? So they're getting the distortion of the lens or all that stuff, too. Kind of like that. Yeah, that's cool. But yeah, I know. That's kind of cool, right? Whoops, I went to the wrong one. <laughs> After I said, that's kind of cool, right? I went to the wrong one. There we go. Maybe something from that side. And... Of course, I mean, there's so many filters that you could choose to add here. A uh, color enhancer is a nice one, right? Let me just, and what color? I turned auto on here. The It's not doing enough. Of course, you could go and choose the individual color you want to pump up. Maybe go a little more towards this, a little more saturation. And we, all right, we've gone too far with the color. I shouldn't have put the <laughs> color enhancer on and then I hit the done button, which was stupid. However, you can go and choose fade. So fade is undo on a slider. If you think you did too much, you can take it all off, put some of it on, or in this case, I did go too far. I want to find that sweet spot in between to get us to there. So yeah, there's the original good shot to start off with. And we just, Added some color and some definitions up. I haven't sharpened it yet. There's some a few more things that we could probably do. You know what else I'd probably do? It's going to sound like you're going to go add a vignette now with this bright, bright shot. I'm going to go see what a tiny bit would do. Just a little tiny bit. Just a little bit like maybe that. Maybe a little more. Just that little tiny bit of vignette. 
just like that. It just kind of warms it up. All right. So good shot. And uh, all right, uh, Eric, let's, yeah, we get, got, let's do we our got prizes. Yes. And yes. I'm going to get the next image ready. So uh, we got Janice Stevenson is winning Scott's Lightroom book. Then we have Cecilia Allgood winning the pho photography trivia. Then we have uh, Teresa Teresa winning the Boris effects. And then we have Rachel DeVrint De uh, winning the On One No Noise. Elizabeth Moe winning the multi-accessory kit, the Plaid Pub Runner accessory kit. And then we have Colleen Logan winning the Lightroom conference ticket. So just email us over at uh, gridprize at kelby1.com and we'll verify information and get you out your prize. There you go. Also, uh, if, you want to, if you want to come to the conference, go to kelby1live.com and you'll yep. find it there. There's more information. There's the full class schedule, the instructor list, all that. So that's it right there. Click that button, register early and save, because if you register now, you will save a bunch of money. If you wait to the last minute, you won't. Okay, let's look at this image. Here we go. So good image, another one. We're starting off with a good image from the very start. Um, so if I had to analyze it, I would say it's probably a little overexposed. Uh, it is, um, the, it's crooked. So look at the, the, the wall, the window, mm -hmm. window's crooked. Mm -hmm. The wall behind her is crooked. Face is a little too bright. You could use, you're going to think I'm crazy when I say this. You're, you could use skin smoothing, but not to smooth her skin, just to smooth the gradations between the light. And it actually does a really good job. She doesn't need smoother skin. Her skin's very smooth. Um, but we use it for other stuff. And uh, you could get rid of some of the stray hairs if you wanted. But, uh, and a little color balance too, maybe because the window looks blue. So blue-ish, all right? So let's start. Let's go and choose for our profile. It's raw photos. Let's choose Adobe Portrait, and let's just hit auto. Yeah, you can see how overexposed that was. Yeah. Now, I do like the face to be brighter, so I'll, I will do that. But something funky. There's too much shadows. Look how much it opened up the shadows. It's, it's too much. It starts to – if you use the shadows too much, people, they start to look HDR. Well, you know, and sometimes with that, um, that auto slider – Again, it's trying to kind of create like a balanced image. Right. And what you could see, what you said first, it's overexposed. What immediately did it do? It dropped it almost a whole stop. There's yep. like 0. 0.7. It's almost a whole stop right out yeah, of Yeah, three it. quarters of a stop. Yeah. All right. Next, what if um, I'm looking at this, this window over here. It's, I'm going to get the eyedropper tool for white balance, click it over here to where it looks white now. And her skin looks warmer. So I'm going to just show you just a quick before and after, uh, if I can just show you that. See how blue it was? Yeah. So now it looks whitish. In fact, it could almost go a little warmer just to make sure that blue's not there. Uh, it, but that's pretty good. Now we got to go straighten this thing. Let's go to optics and turn on the profile. Let's go another Sigma, another Sigma lens. Mm -hmm. Let's go to geometry, and I'm going to use the rotate. And I'm just going to rotate it until I see that wall looks straight and the wall behind her looks fairly straight. Well, you're going to get one or the other. You don't get them both. All right. <laughs> now, what would you say for the people that argue, well, I liked it tilted, you know. You can leave it tilted. A, that's if you like thing. it tilted, that's leave a, it tilted. But it's, it, it, it's going to be weird for the viewer. Yes. Because it doesn't, it, it looked like more of a mistake than an intentional thing. Correct. I've seen people do tilted photos that look very intentional and they're fine. Well, it it's almost seems like if you want to do it, you have to make it very intentional. Yeah. Like you were saying, very yep. intentional. All right. I, I just want to do smoothing on her face. I don't want to smooth her hair. I don't want to smooth all this other stuff. So I'm going to go to the masking tool. I'm going to go select subject. Now, it selected all of her. Look at the great job it did on her hair and stuff, right? Yeah. So it got her hair, got her face and her hand and everything. So I, I, I don't want that. Here's the trick to getting just the face. Hit subtract. So I want to subtract something, and I'm going to use the radial gradient, so the round circular gradient, and I'm going to drag it out over her face. Now, you're saying, but Scott, you said you didn't want her face. You just erased her face. I know, because we have one less, more, one more step to do, which is to go over here to this little invert icon. 
it'll just say the word invert in Lightroom. Just click on it, and now it's just her face. So we select the whole subject, put a circle over the, of the area you want, and then hit invert. And so now I can go in here, and believe it or not, negative clarity and negative texture do a nice job of smoothing the skin. But I'm not really trying again. I'm not trying, so does dehaze. I'm not trying to really smooth her skin. I'm trying to just make the gradations in the in the skin from bright areas yeah, to you're, dark you're areas. You're more trying to smooth out the smooth. light. Light. Then, I'm trying to smooth yeah. out the light. Thank you. The gradations, right? All right. Kind of creating like more of a soft, uh, yep. soft boss effect. And yeah. so that all looks pretty good. You could say, well, what about her eyes? You could go and erase the eyes. You could say, okay, subtract from the radial gradient the brush, and then you could say, not the eyes, and then her eyes are unaffected. And uh, outside of that, I think we're in pretty good shape. This is a pretty easy one. Yeah. So we'll open it. Mm. I'm going to show you the before, and you're going to go. It's not much different, and it's not going to be a, a big one. So let's go to the raw file. Let's go back to reset to default. But the one thing I do want you to see was how blue it was. And overexposed, yeah. And overexposed. But, I mean, the overexposed look is a thing. You know, like some people do really want to go, but look how blue it was. And you don't notice that at first until you fix it. Then you're like, wow, we're skin was. Now, if you think that's a little too punchy, you could just go to camera raw filter and lower the saturation amount in the basic panel and just take some of that color off. So it won't look blue, but it won't look quite as warm. So just a little quickie. All right, last one. Uh, give me a second to pull it up. All right. And the last one is going to be, we had so many people sending those. So thank you to everybody who sent in, got lots of images. Here we go. All right. Oh yeah. What is the first thing that strikes you about this photo in the Grand Canal of Venice? You've been in that very Grand Canal, Mr. Kuna. It's interesting that there's only one boat. It is interesting there's only <laughs> one boat. It happens at early in the morning. This is, looks yes, like it was taken at it sunrise. It like that. Um, Not sunset, it's like a sunrise shot. Let's see what else. What catches my eye is... I can't believe there's no scaffolding. <laughs> yeah, there's no scaffolding. Is the blue. It, it, I mean, it's now, it completely is a morning blue, shot, yeah. But it's very, very blue. So I would go... Let's go ahead and first choose Adobe Landscape to get our color starting off in a better spot. Get the eyedropper tool. Let's click it on the dome of the church here. Yeah. And the, the color looks much more yeah, natural I mean, it, now. It's, it was blue-green to me, yeah. Yeah, blue so green. let's just look at just that. See how blue it was? Now you could say I want it to look very morningy, and that yeah. in that case, now it's an artistic cho choice you were choosing. I want it to be blue. I know it's not. An, well, a so I have a different approach. Like, like so, what I like to do a lot of times is is balance or white balance it mm. and balance it, and then use the color tone or like the color grading and the, the color, color mixing yep. to actually bring those colors back in. Yep. Because I just find that that does better with detail if I nail the white balance. But yeah, no, me. no, I, I always, well, nailing my white balance up front is good because it doesn't change your exposure later. Right. All right. So this looks pretty good. Uh, overall, I would just, you know, let's hit the auto button and see what happens. It's just made it a little bit brighter, but there's a lot of detail and texture here. I would go texture, clarity. Uh, so twice as much texture as the amount of clarity. And then... I think I would brighten the boat. The boat is obviously a focal point here. Go to the mask, get the brush. I mean, I think that's that's what they want you to see is the boat, right? Make sure the boat boat is nice and bright. And then you got a really cruddy sky with weird stuff in it. Now, I know that they're birds, but it just looks like dust specks. It looks like stuff you don't want in there. They're all blurry and everything. So I would probably, well, I certainly would get rid of the birds. Mm-hmm. Let's get up. Oh, those are those are spots on my screen. I hate that. I'm removing spots that aren't really there. But those birds look like they're they're really there. Okay. And then I gotta tell you, if it were me, and it is, I'd go into the edit menu. Sky choose replacement. sky replacement. That's what I would do too. <laughs> yep. Choose one of the skies. Now, now these are the default skies that come with Photoshop. You are better off. Don't use those. Don't use those because then people will go, oh, that's the Photoshop sky. See that every time I'm in Photoshop. Don't do that. But they have a set called Blue Skies, and you can see that doesn't look good. You have to go through them and see which one looks good. That one doesn't look bad. I'm not sure about that one. That's okay. 
No. Mm -mm. That's kind of okay. No. Then they have spectacular skies. That's realistic. Let's throw a rainbow back there. All right, what do we got here? No. How about a rainy day? Yes. That looks good. That looks fakey. All right. Then you can just try different skies. It might take a minute. I think the rainy day one looks the best. This one That's right fun. up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks legit. Legit. Well, it's the other thing, too, is the water has a green tone to it. You got to take out. And yeah, depending me, on what sky you put in it. But I got to yeah. tell you, the water is not blue, as you well know. It is In the Venice Canal. It isn't, but right now it's looking a little too green. It is. Yeah, it might look a little too green for the sky that is above it. That one's not bad. Anyway, the, the best thing you can do is put your own sky in. You know, and, yeah, and, yeah. and figure Some it out. Down there. Well, All right, so that's what I would do. I would probably add a, let's flatten the image and add, uh, come in at the very end with a little bit of an edge vignette. Let's go to camera raw filter. So you're like, you're going back to Lightroom here. Go to effects, pop in a little vignette, just a little tiny bit, not very much, not enough so you'd even know. And, you know, I, I'm also not sure that I need this, the edge of this museum down here. Mm -hmm. I might go and get to, to make the everything. There's just a lot of water. I think I might go more like this puts the boat in a more interesting spot. Yeah. I think it's probably a better crop at the end of the day. And there you go. Something like that. Boom. A little tighter, but I mean, it's a nicely done image. Now we didn't sharpen it or anything, you know, you yeah. do that and stuff. And again, oh, well now what Eric said is you could go in at the very last minute Drop in a, uh, go to the color grading and choose to, you know, go any way you want with this. You put a color in your shadows, color in your highlights. Yeah, I, I just like doing that. Like, yeah. And because yeah. it also, it also does that there too, especially if you start replacing the skies or doing color adjustments, it kind of grades the whole image. So it kind of yeah. hides any differences. So here's before the color grading. And then after the color grading. Yeah, see how it, like the the foreground and the background because you place the sky, it kind of kind of made it um, blend all together. Yeah, unify. unify. That's it. So all right, let's look at the original, and you're going to see that we didn't do all that much, but we did some. Go back to the default, and pull this out pull this out put them side by side so you get the idea oh. let's try one more time with feeling there we go there we go so you can kind of see them side by side here so we didn't you know i mean besides the clouds we we did add some clouds but i think the colors is very pleasing Mm -hmm. Like it's a very nice, warm, I want to go there kind of thing. And the, the water doesn't look as green anymore. Yeah. That, yeah, that, that, and that, yeah, you sucked out the blue, sucked out the green. The buildings look alive. Now, last thing, if, if you really were worried about that, that's that, um, water, what you could do is this, add a new layer, go steal, go steal a color from the sky. So let's go use the eyedropper tool and steal one of these kind of purpley colors here and then just paint over, get a brush and paint over the entire water area. Like this. And done. Perfect. And you're done. Yeah. It looks great. And then you would change the mode <laughs> to color. Yep. So that see how that brings in the color from the sky? Oh, there's a little, there's a little bit too much green right around the boat. We have to get a little tighter on the boat. There we go. So now you're bringing in that color. Yeah, and you but just now have that, to, you can really see when you do that how much green it was in there. Yeah. So there was, there was a reasonable amount of green. We just put in some of that. Just kind of balances the overall tone a little bit better. Boom. That's what I do. All right. Well, guys, so, uh, we did run over by a few minutes, which is our hallmark. We like to start a little late and real late. 
Uh, but uh, thank you for everybody who sent in one of their images. We can't do the show without you, obviously. So thanks. Also, thanks that everybody that sent in images. We had yeah, lots great of great photos. Yeah. If your photo didn't get chosen today, it's not because it was a bad photo or anything. It's just we can only do so much yeah, only the do time so that we have. So we pick pick some ones that were, you know, that were uh, low hanging fruit. There you go. <laughs> All right. So uh, thanks to everybody. Thanks to my crew for coming in here today. Looking forward to seeing a whole bunch of you next week. Do we have a grid next yeah, week? We don't have a grid next week. We, don't have, we have the conference. Week. So if you're if you're here on Wednesday, we'll be at the conference. So you'll just yeah. So just join us at the conference. Yeah, just join, join us, us the over there. It's going to be a it's lot of fun. It's basically like a bunch of these type episodes, just tons of it, but it's more training. It's Straight training. Yeah, it's all straight. It's all straight training, and I've got I've got three classes I'm doing that I'm very excited about. Mm -hmm. uh, got some really good stuff to show you. Of course, you're going to learn about the masking and editing and all that stuff to death because we have 21 classes. 21. Well, technically, I mean, you did like two in the pre-con because you're doing like one. So it's like 22, and then then we have bonus sessions. We have like three of those too. So we got time. we got like 25. it's a lot of stuff, and you get it archived for a year. So if yeah. you missed a a class and maybe you're in track A and you say, oh, I wish I could see what's in track B. You can see them all. You got an archive for a year. Thanks, everybody. Thanks to our sponsors. And we'll catch you guys in two weeks. See you next week at the Lightroom Conference. Take care, everybody.